All right, a lot to get to this hour, but we begin with a look ahead to tonight when President Biden will deliver the State of the Union address in less than nine hours from now. And he certainly will have a lot of explaining to do to the nation. First, there's the growing controversy over that Chinese spy balloon that flew over the country for more than a week before the U.S. took any action. There's also the record-breaking migrant surge at our southern border and the scandal surrounding his son, Hunter. I don't think he'll mention that. Plus, his address tonight is also seen as a kickoff for his 2024 campaign. Yes, he's running. I always told you he was. But he may have a lot of convincing to do on that front. A new poll shows that a majority of Democrats don't even want him to run again. Biden is also expected to call for unity tonight. But that may be a tough selling point considering he just said this on Friday. Jobs are up, wages are up, inflation is down, and COVID no longer controls our lives. But now the extreme MAGA Republicans in the House of Representatives have made it clear they intend to put it all at risk. This is not your father's Republican Party. These are disruptive people. So let me ask you a simple question. Are you with me? Bill, so political reporting, this is going to be a unity speech. We won't hear MAGA Republicans, none of that blood red MAGA speech background. You don't think so? That we saw. That, <laughs> apparently. No. Um, what do you expect? Um, <clears throat> I think that you're probably going to hear a policy speech that deals with we set in place these ideas and they're working and give them time. And we need more time, so we're going to stay the course. With regard to the speech tonight, however, uh, you, you think about State of the Union addresses. Last year, he had about 38 million people watch. 20 years ago, George Bush had 62 million people yeah. watch. That was March of 2003, getting a build up to the Iraq War. Times were a little different then, but still, if, if you look at the popularity of viewership over the past 20 years, it's gone down more and more. Now, having said that, 38, 40 million people is still a pretty good slice of the American. He has a chance to have a conversation. I would expect him to push his own policies and his own ideas. With regard to unity, that was really the theme that he brought to the inauguration speech. Mm -hmm. You can ask Republicans how that's gone two years ago. <laughs> it hasn't gone well. I've talked to some of those Republicans. Um, but Harris, you know, interestingly, you look back historically, you have President Gerald Ford, who was very candid with the American people. The State of the yeah. Union is not good. Mm -hmm. President Trump said the State of the Union is strong. Biden said that. It's my view that if he were honest tonight, he would say the state of our union is compromised. We've had a Chinese spy balloon traverse the United States. We have the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. We all woke up to that new Taliban state just over a year ago. Uh, the Russia war, the illegal border crossings. Mm -hmm. You feel compromised. Documents by the wheel of a Corvette. National security, to me, must take the spotlight. And I, as an American, feel compromised. Well, I doubt that he'll start there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't think that he'll start with what is also, to me, equally as obvious as Americans are processing their daily lives. And you don't have to do the, is your life better than it was two years ago? Is your life better at all? Hmm. Is there any facet of your life that's rocking better now than it was just a short period of time? Because it's worsening by far day to day to day. You mentioned the border crisis. So I, I would expect him to say, you know, in half the country, this is dinner hour. I want to start there. I, I see what, what you're dealing with here. I see the price of breakfast in, in particular. I, I see the prices of things have not come down where you feel them even though I said the Inflation Reduction Act would touch it. I think he's got to go there. I think he's got to acknowledge the fact that much of that money, if not all of it, was for climate change and what his real goals are with the American people. And if they are to bring down the prices, other than gas for a little while, by tapping our oil reserves like they're a keg, yeah. and now they're low, historically low, and going back up as China threatens to buy some global oil and bring those prices back up, I think he's got to be real with, pretty with good. the American It's pretty good. And whatever it does, it's almost like an I feel your pain. Sort yeah, of. but he won't say that. He doesn't have that Clinton gear. Mm. He should say that, though. I mean, to your point, we've seen very bad polling, you know, 37% feeling good about the country and the direction and feeling better off financially, Ainsley. But, you know, you put all of that aside, I don't think Biden's going to mention any of that. We remember last year, Josh Rogan from The Washington Post, a really smart writer, said 
No mention of the Afghanistan withdrawal, no mention of Syria, no mention of Iran, no mention of North Korea, barely a mention of China. He avoids topics that don't look good for him. So tonight, I don't think we'll hear what It'll he be said. short then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. he, said, he said he's not changing his speech after they've already written it. Then the China spy flight happens. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. says he's not changing his speech. He's going to have to say something. Uh, to that, I was watching your show earlier this morning, and y'all were talking about how Dana had read an article where it said he might have a small little mention sentence, of it, but, a not, sentence, a but not a paragraph. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But he's yeah. going to have to address that. This is something that's on, on the forefront of all of our minds, especially when General Minahan, he predicts that we're going to be at war with China in two years, 2025. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. scary. Then they're sending this spy flight over our country for eight days. He didn't shoot it down. We all have questions. Why didn't he shoot it? He said it has to be over the water. Well, it was over the water on February 28th when it was flying from Alaska. <laughs> right. He waited eight more days the next Saturday. That was a Saturday. He waited a week uh, to shoot it down off the coast of South Carolina after they've seen our military installations and our silos and, and what who knows what they've seen. And some of the experts are saying, I don't think they have any information. There was no way to, for them to get intel from that. That is... I'll, I won't say the word I want to say. I, I know B. what you're thinking. <laughs> so, because that's not true. It's China. Their technology is so advanced. They have the ability to, whatever they're recording up on this balloon, they have the ability to send that back to their country and find of out where course. our military is, especially if they're going to invade us in 2025. I hope they don't. If they can they do. spy on us with TikTok, you don't think they of can course. get the thing in the sky to send back a signal? <laughs> and by the way, why wouldn't it be in the speech? That speech was probably written within the last... 10 days. Yeah, not yep. to mention COVID. Well, How many millions so of people died? So was the China yeah. spycraft. We Emily, just didn't know. Emily, we also expect there to be a 2024 kind of pitch. So it'll be subtle. This is obviously an official speech, mm -hmm. but it'll be used in some ways as a campaign speech. Politico saying President Biden is planning to use his State of the Union address to paint broad strokes of a likely campaign ahead, contrasting steady leadership with newly elected, likely chaotic Republicans. Um, so that contrast messaging, I think we'll see. But instead of trying to convince the American public like he should be president again. Maybe he should convince his own party uh, because Democrats, 37 percent, say they want him to seek a second term. This is down from 52 percent during the midterms. That's striking. Right. And an even larger percentage say they would be downright angry or disappointed if he was to be reelected. Um, I agree with every everyone's comments here on the couch. I think the, the first thing we need from him tonight but it is the last thing we would ever get is that empathy. Harris, you're absolutely right. The last thing we would ever get from our commander in chief is an acknowledgement of the pain that Americans are suffering right now over the kitchen table and over their pocketbooks. We know we talked about yesterday that over eight out of 10 families have already dipped into their savings within three months time because they are trying to make ends meet or they have stopped saving. And when he was asked about it, he responded by swearing. This is the commander in chief that under his botched Afghanistan withdrawal, 13 service members lost their lives that he has yet to continually acknowledge. As he says, I have no regrets over that. So tonight, as Senator Barrasso wrote, I believe that we're going to hear, as he says, there's been no presidential failure, no matter how embarrassing or how destructive, that he has not called a victory. And that's what we're going to hear tonight, is him patting himself on the back about taking down the Chinese spy flight 10 days after the fact. We're going to hear him pat himself of, on the back about record economic recovery, not accounting for the fact that COVID had it in the toilet, essentially. Everything will be spun. He will absolutely reference as the enemy anyone who is on the GOP side. He will blame the average hardworking Americans for flying the American flag and for flying the thin blue flag. And I'll bet you he will name a lot of names tonight that don't equate to and are not those honorable men and women in service in uniform who have given their lives on the line under his watch. So it looks like we're all watching. Looks like we're all watching. <laughs> right? yes. I, I, I'll be listening tonight to see what's memorable. Mm -hmm. And you think about back in history, you know, how many lines have really been memorable from the State of the Union address? You know, Bill Clinton had the line from the 1990s about the era of big government is over. Yes. Well, what happened in between? <laughs> you know, th <laughs> th think about the 20 years that passed um, uh, in between. Distant memory. I, I, think, I, I think Donald Trump had a really good one about three years ago. He had a number of characters from the audience, and yes. I think he finished with Rush Limbaugh and the That's award right. he gave yeah. him. Yes. And I think that was the speech where Nancy Pelosi ripped it up at the end. That's right. And That I, was the I, one I, I, behind that, him. That was the one, and that's what everyone was talking about post-speech. I'll be listening to see whether or not there are any good lines from this speech. Um, you don't want to make any mistakes tonight. Oh. Um, and if you don't make mistakes and there's nothing memorable, I wonder if we've been talking about this on Thursday. Yeah, and well, we're going to see McCarthy sitting in the back behind well, yeah, the president. They're reportedly he... rehearsing with him over and over and over 
um, so that he won't have a gaffe. Mm -hmm. it, it, but you know he'll stray from the teleprompter at least yeah. one time. He'll also There's mumble. No about it. He will stutter. <laughs> or right? there will The execution will Bless not be heart. there. We know how hard. Yeah. But we know how hard. Heard You're more Sean, generous Sean, than I am. Sean Heaney <laughs> last night said the font will be extra large. <laughs> that I am sure. I need extra large font too, though, in fairness <laughs> to the president. Exactly. Uh -huh. But Bill, oh. to your point, just House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said he will not rip up the speech, so we won't see that tonight. Uh -huh. Noted. And yeah. also to your point about President President Trump's speech, knowing how to use the room is so key. And that last mm -hmm. State of the Union from President Trump, having all the people throughout the audience, mm -hmm. really yeah. telling their story, bringing it to life, personalizing it, striking so, a heart So, Kay, I, I saw a list earlier today of 16 people that will be there. Mm -hmm. I imagine he'll reference a number of them. Steel workers, union workers, maybe infrastructure references to the chips bill, uh, et cetera. I, I think Tyree Nichols' family members yes. mm -hmm. yes. uh, will be there in attendance as well. They were invited well. over so a week he, ago. He's got some yeah. opportunities here to make some moments, and we'll see how well he does. And Bono is his guest, and McCarthy's guest is Ennis Cantor Freedom. Great guest. There we go. It was on this Bravo. couch. I saw it on maternity yeah. leave. <laughs> yes. And be sure to keep it right here on Fox News for tonight's State of the Union address. Brett Baer and Martha McCallum lead special coverage kicking off at 8.55 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss it. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.